Hey, hey everyone, welcome back to POA for you. Um, my name is Leroy, and today I'm going to go through the O levels specimen paper 2021, paper 2, question 1. Now, you should know that this question is a very important question because this question or this type of question were bound to come out every year during the O level examinations. Um, and it carries 20 marks, and if you get this right, then that's 20% for you. Uh, which is a good start for your exams. So let's get right into it. Um, so there are three uh, important steps to approach this question and I, I would advise you to follow these three steps religiously uh, and it will make the output of preparing the financial statements, um, statement of financial performance and the statement of financial position uh, seamless uh, once you do these three steps. So I'm going to share with you what these three steps are. First step, when you look at the trial balance here, um, you got to know whether they are, are relating to question part A or part B. So is it a financial performance item or a financial position item, right? And the financial performance items are usually revenues, expense, and income related items. And financial Position items are asset, liabilities, and capital or equity items, right? So let's look at individually what they are. Uh, equipment at cost. This is a non-current asset, so it's a financial position item. I'm going to put B here. So it's motor vehicles. Accumulated depreciation is one of those things that will bring down your, equipment, uh, your fixed asset at cost to reflect net book value. So they belong to the fa same family of non-current assets. Sales revenues, that's a revenue item, so financial performance, sales returns, financial performance, so all these look like financial performance because they are expenses, uh, revenues uh, related and income. So rent received sounds like an income, right? Then trade receivables, it's a financial position item, current, a current asset. Trade payables, current liability, cash at bank, current asset, financial position item. Allowance for trade, impairment for trade receivables. So this is a financial position item. When you look at, a lot of people get confused, right? There's the allowance for impairment for trade receivables and there's also the impairment loss for trade receivables. The allowance is always the financial position item. So remember that when you see allowance, it's always the financial position item. Impairment loss will be the financial performance item so allowance financial position allowance uh, allowance financial position and per impairment loss is financial performance then moving along inventory current asset and share capital is equity retain earnings equity so that's the first step very simple now let's look at the second steps all right the second step is oops, let me just do the second step first um, second step journal entries so in here you have some additional information right and the this additional this set of additional information would entail journal entries that will either change the balances on your trial balance or create new accounts that you got to reflect in the statement of financial performance or statement of financial position so let's take a look at this right general expense 350 were prepaid and wages and salaries 560 were owing so this is about create uh, about the concept of prepaid expenses and uh, expenses payables right so if general expenses 350 were prepaid then prepaid expenses is a asset your asset is going up your prepaid so debit I'm going to debit prepaid uh, general expense because uh, exp uh, assets are debit in nature so this would be uh, 350 here um, excuse me 350 here and I will credit the general expenses because uh, general expenses in here uh, of 30, 39,700 has been overstated Right, out of which 350 were actually prepaid for future periods. So the current expense, the, the expense for current period, it's not so high. It's $350 less. So expense is 
debit in nature and you want to bring it down you credit it and that's why the double entry okay next uh wages and salaries owing so when when you have something owing you are going to uh you know that it's a liability and liability is credit in nature so you're going to credit wages and salaries payables right and that's gonna be 560 and you would then it would then mean that this 78,960 of wages and salary is too little you you still owe 560 so it has to increase by 560 and wages and salaries is, a, is an expense that's debit in nature so you're going to debit uh, wages and salaries to bring this number up by 560 so that's the first question it has two sets of double entries and that's what you need to know uh, as a starting point for step two rent step uh, rent owing to the company was 500 so you receive 1000 rent but it's people are still people still owe you 500 of rent so when people owe you it's a asset so you debit rent receivables uh, or you can debit other receipts but they can maybe other receivables as well so it may actually be other receivables then you can put there bracket rent other receivables rent oops whoa, 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 where? rent right and that would be uh 500 and then what do you credit you credit the income rent received and rent received here is actually an income item and to increase the income item since income is a credit in nature you got to credit it by 500 um, next item uh, equipment repairs 3000 has been incorrectly debited to the equipment account so you have an equipment repair account here right 5006 you have equipment at cost so equipment at cost is an asset equipment at repairs is a is an expense so it's different and errors could happen like that so you what you do is you need to reduce this amount and increase this amount and both are debit nature items so you want to reduce a debit nature item you credit it and you want to increase a debit nature item you debit it so i'm going to start by debiting uh equipment repairs by how much is this three thousand eh? and i'm going to credit equipment uh at cost okay by same amount next uh part four equipment depreciated 25 percent street line method motor vehicles 20 percent reducing so let's do the equipment first equipment is 25 percent street line method right and depreciation is a standard uh journal entry and you got to remember this regardless of what kind of depreciation you debit depreciation uh expense and this is equipment and you credit accumulated depreciation i'm going to use abbreviations here yeah uh equipment okay and now the next thing is to find out the amount so it's 25 percent right multiplied by if it's straight line that means it's at cost at cost cost is 196 here but we know that uh, in the journal entry before there were some errors that you were wrongly debited to equipment account so you got to take into account this um, this this correction first before you calculate your depreciation so then you minus your 3000 here okay I'm gonna put 3000 here and that is your final depreciation right uh, for equipment then we are going to do it for motor vehicles the journal entry is the same so i'm going to change equipment to mv as an abbreviation for motor vehicles mv and now to calculate how much this is so it's 20 percent using reducing method reducing method applies the depreciation rate on net book value so it's not on the cost of the asset but net book value and net book value is cost less accumulated depreciation right so let's find out what the cost is cost was 84,000 less accumulated depreciation 30 to 40 all right and that's it that's the answer or that's the number that you're looking for next the allowance for in payment of trade receivables to be maintained at four percent of trade receivables so this 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 will this um, adjustment or additional information will most often come out uh, like depreciation it always almost always comes up right uh, now 
you you need to know that this you first you need to do is to calculate how much you want that allowance for impairment of trade receivables to be at the end of the year and here they say it's four percent of the trade receivables amount which is twenty thousand so 800 is the amount that you're looking for now how much do they already have in the allowance account they have 600 here as indicated here so you want the ending amount to land at 800 which means that how much you got to adjust it by 200 right you want it to be 800 it's already 600 and you got to adjust it upwards right so i'm going to just make the number here 200 right because that's going to be the value of the journal entry now you know that you want to adjust it upwards the allowance is a credit nature item allowance for impairment of trade receivables is a credit nature item so if you want to increase the credit nature item uh, then you've got to credit it so i'm going to credit allowance for impairment of tr i'm going to use an abbreviation here and what do you debit the debit side of this adjustment is always to the same account debit impairment of impairment loss on trade receivables okay now if you find in other questions that you instead of crediting allowance for impairment on trade receivables you had to debit it because you want to bring the ending balance down then the other entry the other credit entry would also go to impairment loss on tr on trade receivables so you just have to remember that these are standard entries Next, uh, as the company declared dividends of 12 cents per share, dividends will be paid on 1st of September. So our year end is 31st of July, so there will be a dividend payable, right? So the entry would be debit because this would reduce your retained earnings. You, uh, dividends are not always paid up from retained earnings. Uh, retained earnings, all right? And credit dividend payable. And this is equals 0 0.12 times per share how many shares hundred thousand shares all right twelve thousand dollars so that is step two right now let's go to step three step three would be uh to if they are updated balance based on these journal entries then we got to update these balance otherwise we got to highlight new accounts let me show you equipment at cost uh yes no sorry you start always from the journal entries uh, journal entries prepaid general expenses i don't see that in the trial balance so i'm going to mark it as new uh, i'm going to mark it as new and i'm going to put a b here because this is a uh, financial position item so it goes to part b and general expense is credit so i'm going to general expense where's my general expense so i'm going to mark it as uh, 39 700 minus 350 all right and this is the final amount that i need to bring over uh wages and salaries will be 560 wages and salaries will be debit so equals to 78 960 plus 560 and the credit of wages and salaries payable is a new item because i don't see it in trial balance so i'm going to highlight it and put it as b now um other receivables rent uh, this is a new item as well because I don't see it in my trial balance and I'm going to put it as A, I'm sorry, as B because it's a financial position item. Rent received, uh, I have this account, 1000 and it's credit to a credit nature item so it's going to increase it by 500. Next, um, equipment's repair is, uh, yep, it's an existing item so I'm it's debiting it, 5600 plus uh, 3000 and equipment at cost will be uh, equals to 19600 minus 3000 then the next thing is uh, depreciation for the next items depreciation expenses are new items so i've marked them yellow as well and put them as a because they are financial performance items similarly to impairment loss they are new and they go to the financial performance statement um, and dividend payable goes to the financial position statement and all these adjustments i've brought it to uh, reflect the new balances here now so that's the third step 
Now, uh, next thing you got to transfer everything to the financial performance and position statements, which I'll show you in the next video. I, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Keep watching to the next videos because that will show you how seamlessly we can transfer all these to the position and performance statements. Hope you enjoyed this.